Pop quiz, gentlemen. What's the difference between a pair of shoes that's been Blake stitched, that's been cemented, or that's been Goodyear welted? Do you know the difference? Most men don't. And that's where the problem lies because you're out there looking at all this information online, trying to decipher through it. You're seeing these terms and you don't know what you're buying. So you could think that you're buying a pair of shoes that are of great quality and they end up uh, not being of good quality, or you could be oversold something that you don't really need. The purpose of today's video, talk to you about the three forms of shoe construction and why they matter. So I'm going to divide this video into three parts. Part one, I'm going to talk about shoe terminology. You need to understand the terms in order to kind of make your way in and around the shoe. Part two, we're going to talk about the various forms of construction. And then part three, we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each form of shoe construction. Now throughout this video, you're going to see some amazing images of dress shoes, dress boots. You're going to see some dress shoes with great looking contrasting leathers with blue suede. Some of them are going to be much more subtle like what we have right here. If you're wondering where can I purchase any of these shoes you'll see the images of in this video, go to Ace Marks guys. I'm going to link to them down in the description of this video. I'm also going to put a discount code there. They are the paid sponsor of this video and I've worked with Ace Marks for now over a year. I've been testing out their shoes, testing out their dress boots. Actually, I've got a pair of suede dress boots on right now that I can tell you in the last 150 days, I've probably worn at least a hundred times. They're that good. All of these shoes made in Italy and I'll be talking about their construction, why it's a great deal. So make sure go check them out, support this company. And while you're over at their website, check out their about us page. Guys, I love their story. They went over to Italy. They found the artisans. They worked with them. They've had some amazing success on Kickstarter. So definitely go check out all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, I can tell you guys, great company, great shoes. Definitely take advantage of that discount I'm putting down in the description. To start things off, gentlemen, let's talk about terminology. Terminology is important so that we can actually be talking about the same things. It, we're going to keep it really simple here. I'm going to call all of this the upper and the upper does refer to the leather upper part of a shoe. What most of us are shining, what most of us see whenever we buy a pair of shoes, the upper is actually broken up into many other parts. So you've got the cap, we've got the, the vamp, we've got right here the tongue, we've got the heel, we've got the eyelets. I'm going to throw all that into the upper right now because that would be the subject for another video. But I will say that this in general is going to be the part of the shoe that wraps around your foot. Next, we've got the insole. The insole is going to be the inside of the shoe. This is actually what the bottom of your foot touches. Next, we have the outsole and the outsole is going to be what touches the ground. After that, we have what's known as a welt. A welt isn't always going to be visible. In the case of a Blake stitch, the welt is inside here, so I'm not going to be able to see it, but the welt is what connects the outsole to the upper. Finally, we've got the last. The last is going to be the form that actually was in here whenever they formed it. If every company's got a different last and that has how fit is different with different brands. Oftentimes the width can be affected, but also the length and the overall shape of the foot. That's why when you buy something from another company, sometimes it doesn't actually feel the same, but the last, if you can imagine, is a form that goes in and the shoe is built and its shape around it. So now that we've got the terminology out of the way, let's talk about shoe construction. As I talked about earlier, there are three main forms of shoe construction. Number one, you've got cementing. That's going to be the most common out there. Next up, you've got the Blake stitch. And then after that, you've got the Goodyear welt. The first type of shoe construction that we're going to discuss is cementing, AKA gluing, sometimes called other things. But the point is they're using an adhesive to connect the outer sole with the upper. What they do is that they put the last in here, they put the upper in and around that, and then they take the outer sole, they connect it to the upper and they put in a very strong adhesive, maize oftentimes called cement that is specifically designed to be able to deal with heat, to be able to deal with friction and the wear and tear, if you can imagine, of step on it thousands of times. For particular shoe types, this is actually what you want. For running shoes, for athletic shoes, uh, for certain types of combat boot, you want to look for actually this type of construction. It's going to be lighter. In some cases, it's going to be more comfortable and it definitely fits in with mass manufacturing practices. 
The second type of shoe construction I want to talk about is the Goodyear Welt. For many people, this is on the opposite end, much higher quality than we're going to see over with the glued together shoes. Now, the Welt actually, who was it? Charles Goodyear Jr. Because before that, what you had, well, you had to actually by hand sew the upper and the insole to the outsole. What he did was he added another part the welt. The welt, if you can imagine, whenever the upper is formed in and around a last, they attach the welt. This is going to be made from various different materials, but the point is, is that you have this new layer and then you would sew that on the outside of the shoe to the actual upper and then you would connect the outer sole. It was all brought together and this allowed much faster manufacturing processes. Oftentimes, it was done by hand still, but it was also done by machine, which enabled it to go quicker. It enabled the resoling to be a lot easier. So, there were just all these advantages and it definitely made a more sturdy shoe. The third type of shoe construction that you need to know is the Blake stitch. So, Imagine taking the Goodyear welt, actually moving the stitches on the inside and getting rid of the welt and instead simply connecting the upper with the inner sole with the outer sole all together with one stitching going through. That is the Blake stitch. It's a more modern type of stitching process. It does require a machine. It's not something that you're going to be able to do by hand, but what you're able to get is a shoe that actually doesn't have to have a welt, but has a many of the advantages of actually being stitched together. So, now that we've covered the three types of shoe construction, let's now talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each. First up, cementing. The advantages are it's cheap, it's fast, and this is how most shoes are manufactured. They're able to keep the price low. The disadvantage is that once they come apart, you pretty much have to throw the shoes out. You can try to apply certain glues and try to redo it, but the problem here is that the upper and the lower of shoes made with this are not made to go back together. So, the problem here is that the upper could look beautiful, but you still have a useless shoe. Now, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the Goodyear Welt. The advantages are that this shoe is going to stay together. The stitching on the outside there is going to stand up until basically the outsole falls apart. And then at that point, you can actually replace it. You can send it off to the company, send it off to a cobbler, and he can simply go in there and simply put on a new outsole and that shoe you can keep wearing. There are people that have had shoes like this for 30 years that they take care of and they get better and better with time. In addition, because of the welt, you actually have cork that's been laid on the inside of the shoe that can start to form to your foot and can become very comfortable. Disadvantages of the Goodyear welt. Number one, cost. Anytime you see handwork involved in shoes and the Goodyear welt build does oftentimes require handwork, you're going to see the shoe price go past $300, $400, $500, $600 because of that additional time and artisan work that goes into building the shoes. Number two, oftentimes the Goodyear welt makes a less flexible shoe. So, if you like your shoes to have some bend to them, it may be an issue when you're looking to buy a Goodyear welt. Now, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the Blake stitch. Number one, you get all of the durable advantages of the Goodyear welt at a lower price. So, the manufacturing processes for the Blake stitch is oftentimes going to be more streamlined. So, right there, you're going to see for the same durability, the ability to get these resold, you're going to pay less than you will for a Goodyear welt. In addition, because there is no welt oftentimes, they're more flexible and therefore more comfortable. Finally, let's look at the stitching on the outside. Notice there isn't any. So, that enables the outside and the overall look of the shoe to be more sleek but with all these advantages, there are some disadvantages. One of them being actually in the construction here, you're going to be less waterproof because we don't have a welt in there that's uh, tying the upper all together and adding that extra layer. You can get a little bit of seepage if you're walking through puddles, which I advise not to do in any type of shoe. So, guys, in today's video, you learned quite a bit about shoe construction, shoe build, and I want to hear from you guys down in the comments. What do you think? What did you learn? What did you find interesting? And don't forget, go check out Ace Marks. If you liked any of the pictures I used in this video, you are going to find it over at Ace Marks. And I can tell you guys, again, the real deal, I've been wearing their shoes now for over a year and this particular pair of dress boots I've got on, I've worn a hundred times in the last 150 days. Great company. Use the link down in the description. It's got a discount code. Great company. Take advantage of the deal. Guys, that's it. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.